young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Yep, check one, two. Welcome back, everybody, to this week's installment of the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your old buddy, your old pal, J.R. the Handler. And with us today, as always, is the award-winning, multi-platinum selling art, recording artist. <laughs> and our, That's a lot of words, ain't it, Justin? <laughs> I'm but, telling and, and I'm out of practice. And Arkansas's favorite new morning sports radio personality from small town USA, Mr. Justin Moore. What's going on, JM? Nothing, man. Just uh trying to get my computer to behave. Uh it's it's like when we don't do the podcast for a week. Everything in our computers go haywire, or at least mine. And and you yeah. gotta redo everything. I'm like, man, come on now. It it was like yeah. a week ago or a week or <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't wasn't that long ago. Uh I know. but it's Goodness. like we need a we need a Nintendo version where you just put the cartridge in and you clip it down and you got one button to turn on and it works every time. I Duck know. Hunt Mario Brothers came on every time. Never had to yeah. run. You might have to blow on it and put it yeah, you might way have to down do the, the road. <laughs> yeah, way way second. after you've had it for a while. But I mean these computers are fairly new. But yeah, I'm, oh and I forgot yeah. something in your intro. I was going to start off with because I've been listening to you on sports radio and that made me think <clears> I said. At guard, but I forgot that part. I'll get that next week. There What's going go. on, buddy? Are, are you still having fun at the sports radio every morning? I've listened to some, but boy, y'all got a lot going on. Yeah, I am. I'm having fun. I, I will say I, I, today, I, I, I'm a little tired. That's why I'm I'm a little behind to record this. Um, I I ate some. I got home and I ate some lunch and had about an hour before you and I were supposed to to do this and. I thought maybe I'll just lay down on the couch and piddle on the internet or whatever, uh, read some stuff. Oh shoot, I was out. I told you we'd start we'd start recording this at two. I woke up at two oh five, like trying to still wake up, I'm splashing water in my face, and I'm like, oh Got no, your blankie wrapped around you, sucking your thumb. Yeah, I told. I'm think. I'm telling myself, golly, Jr.'s probably got to be somewhere by like four or whatever. No, I'm good, buddy. No, we're and good. So, so anyway, um, beyond you know having having to rearrange my schedule just a little bit, it's been been a lot of fun, man. I th- I bet this, I've only taken a nap maybe one or two days today, being one of them. As I've learned with me, if I just keep going. There'll be moments where I get a little tired during the day, but then if I can push through that, I don't know, let's say 10, 15 minute, yeah. where I'm I'm like, I need to go lay down, then I'll kind of catch a second, third, fourth wind, whatever. Right. Um, and I can, and I, I'm fine. But uh, yeah. today I was out. But, but that's yeah, kind of how I, f- it's been fun. That's how I feel on the road, uh, every day on the road. And then, uh, it, you know, by catering at d- dinner, it's like, oh my God, how am I going to make it through this? And then go get a shower and do a shot. It's like, Hey, I'm back. Yeah. So. It's, it's funny, man, because everybody keeps asking me, how are you going to do this on the road? You know, like, <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah. and I'm like, the, the thing is, this will actually be a lot easier for me to do on the road than it is at home. You know, if you think about right. it, when I'm on the, we're on from 6 to 10 Central, and so when we're, when we're on the road, I can, we come on the air about 10 after 6. I can wake up literally at 6 o'clock, brush my teeth, and get rocking. Yeah, and you don't have to drive in. You're just calling in. I don't have to prepare. I just call in, and then at 10 o'clock, I lay back down for a couple hours, whatever. Right. So I'll get more rest and more sleep. You know, here I have to get up at 4 a.m. to make it because I have a 45, 50 minute drive. So it's actually going to be much easier. And then, right. it's obviously, too, while I'm at home, when I come home, I don't want to be lazy and laying around when the kids get home. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to, I want to be involved. And you know, I'm coaching ball games when I'm here, as you know, and and we're going to church and we're doing all of these these types of things and and i've got to be up till at least nine ten o'clock with them you right. know to get them bathed and fed and put you know put to bed yeah. and and so 
out there, you and I, I mean, we have nothing to do, literally, <laughs> literally, until, you know, let's say I'll be done at 10. We have from that point till probably nine o'clock every night to do nothing. <laughs> so it'll actually be much more simple for me out there. So, but and speaking I, of, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, well, I was going to say it. I, I just had a thought while you were saying all that. I bet you're going to be, if not that you aren't awesome already at all this sports stuff. I was talking to Pete earlier, and it was like, imagine, imagine getting to do your your job, your, your dream, the dream job, your country music singer, and then somebody says, "Hey, you want to do your other favorite thing too?" I said, "It'd be like if somebody asked any one of us to do something that we really love." I'm like, "Yeah, it's a, you can't say no, you know." But but think it's about like this, like Popeye spinach. Yeah, it'd be like, you. do I also want to talk, it'd be like, I do this, but do I also want to talk about, I don't know, basketball for 30 minutes every day of, of the two teams I like only. And that's it, it's not even a broad, you, it's, only, it's your main thing. But for you on the road, you're going to get even better too, because at home you've got all this other stuff. We're on the road, I and mean, I know you check in, I know you're on the hog report and all that right. nonstop, but on the road, that's all you do. Yeah. That's all you do. We yeah. listen to music during showtime and after and all that stuff, but before showtime, usually you've got three TVs on with all the different Ar- – I mean, you're going to be so dialed in when you call, yeah. and none of us are talking about Arkansas sports on the road, so you're going to be itching. You're going to wait to call the guys in the morning. <laughs> Ooh, let's talk about some Arkansas stuff. So. Did you see what the women's soccer team did last yeah. night? So I think you're going to be even better. I mean, you're, you're going to be even better than you already are, buddy, and you're killing it so, so far. So well, Yeah, thanks, that's man. awesome. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about that because I know um, – I said when I was thinking of the thing, I was like, "Yeah, Justin gets to." I like kid around, like, "Hey, you know, like Edgar, this that." Justin really gets to do that now. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. So I'm happy for you, buddy. I think it's yeah. awesome. And you know, out on the road too. I mean, we sleep, but I mean, it's scattered. It's like how we talk about we eat. We eat, but it might not be the same times normal people eat. You know, and things like that. So we'll fi- you'll figure <laughs> out a system, and it'll just be a part of the day, like everything else is. Yeah, and, and I think it's been good for me too, man. I mean, I've tried to. I think it's. I think it's done wonders for my routine because, you know, when with what we do for a living, it's really hard to have a routine. I mean, because yeah. something different every day, which you just alluded to, you know, you got to be up visiting a radio station at 6.30 one morning and then or catch a flight super early. You're up at 4.30 the next day. You got to sleep till two p.m. because that's the only time you're gonna get to sleep for the next four days. And right, and, all that you just never know. And and so I think you know having having this um, for the most part uh, having this you know kind of help form a routine for me has has been good. And I've gotten to bed a little earlier than in the past and you know when you go to bed a little earlier you don't drink as much you don't eat as poorly you know i mean just it kind of i think it's going to be i think it's going to um at least this was part of what i was thinking when i signed on i thought you know what it might help develop a little healthier uh lifestyle and choices in my life because it's gonna be miserable if you get up at six o'clock every morning and with a headache, and you know what I mean. Like that oh, wasn't yeah. that wasn't the oh, reason yeah. that I right. I but chose it definitely, to do it, but I thought you know that yeah. that's a good byproduct of it, probably. Absolutely, so, it's and that's affirmative. That's, and I've been you know, uh, so, like you said, affirmative byproduct out of that. Yeah. yeah, and so and I tell you, man, I don't, I, I didn't weigh. But um, I've been eating really clean for two straight weeks now. Nice. Have you started? Yeah, Jr. and I, for those out there listening, and welcome back into the podcast, by the yes. way. I just kind of, we kind of just uh, went on into the, the conversation, but we apologize for not being here with you last week. We um, were kind of easing into the year. Uh, Jr. actually... We'll get him to talk about it later because I'm genuinely curious. We we touched on it, but Jr. and his wife Sharice, along with uh, some some buddies, went down uh, to the Keys and and uh, had a vacation. So we just decided, hey man, instead of instead of worrying about working, um, go ahead and enjoy the vacation because it won't be, but I mean, you know, two and a half, three weeks or so, we'll be back on the road. So. Right. Uh, so that's why we were not with you last week, but we plan on being here uh, a lot of weeks in a row moving forward, and um, and we'll talk about uh, who, some guests we have planned, and we'll talk about your vacation today. Yeah, lots um, of fun stuff. And about. so, uh, but but no, it's um, 
It's good to be back with you. I don't remember where I was going before I, I started that, but I kind of sidetracked there. But, but uh, it's yeah, all good. long, we te- long we and short, about- radio's been fun. Uh, yeah. Look forward to getting back out on the road. Yeah, well, you were going you were going to tell them how we, you know, you and I had talked about it a while back that we had, we threatened to last year, but we oh, didn't there get you to go. kick it yeah, off properly. But about five, six years ago, when we met Diamond Dallas Page, my back was real jacked up and I was real heavy and just felt like crap. And uh, oh. Justin had actually gotten himself in good shape right before that, just eating really clean right before I met him actually. And then um, you care right to about you care to guess what what weight I was when I I was at my peak. Of, th- of of eating cra- eating just yeah, chicken I, and broccoli. Yeah, when I when I was in the best health of my life. Yeah, and my shoot, wife and my wife told me I I looked like I had a disease and I needed to gain about ten fifteen pounds. So that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't even want, I don't even know what above twenty five, twenty seven, one twenty seven. And I probably yeah. was too thin, but I man I felt good. Yeah. Oh yeah, I bet. I mean, yeah, when you, don't, you just don't, and you were eating really I had clean. A, That's I the had a six thing. pack again, yeah, well, which I, I mean, hadn't had since I was eighteen. You know, yeah, like, just uh, you know, vodka and water and uh, chicken and uh, broccoli. I mean, that'll do it pretty much. Yeah, and I didn't eat any, and, and any we played salt some ball, all, back any then. sugar at all. We played ball. I was doing yoga. Yep. Um, DDPY, not normal yeah. yoga. So but when we faint, met Dallas, y'all don't faint out there, <laughs> right? But when we met Dallas, <laughs> uh, I had to get I, Justin already got his in gear, and that was just the last uh, straw. I had to get mine in gear. We both got on it, and it helped me tremendously, and Justin too. And we stayed on track for a long time, and then we kind of let it slip a little, and then the uh, quarantine happened, uh, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, happened, and we just kind of you know had to fend for ourselves for a couple years there, and we. Said a while back, we're going to, you know, hunker back down. And it, we said it last year, and we just didn't get around doing it. It was just a weird year. It was year crazy again. last year, man. It was, it yeah. was, I mean, not to make excuses for us, but it would have been very difficult to, mm-hmm. to do, you know, the whole, you know, thing that it we're just, talking about doing this year. Just, I mean, we talked to you guys, uh, you know, over the last six, eight months about how the difficulty of traveling and nobody – Working in the airport, so you can't. You got to eat literally what is there um, you at the weirdest sometimes. of times. And this mm. year is going to be much more of a what I would consider normal, quote unquote, normal year for us. Um, you know, with our, we won't be doing eight shows in ten days and that kind of stuff. And right. for the most part, we'll be on our buses and we can stock them how we want. And, and yeah, well, even stuff. when last year was crazy. Yeah, even when we could last year, we were just so tired, just beat up. We would just be like, hell with it. Let's get up in and out or whatever, you know. And this At year, midnight. we'll just. Yeah, we'll just do better this year. And and we're going to get back on our DDPY. And yeah, you asked. Yeah, I, I'm starting too. You said you're two weeks in. I've been eating clean. Um, we, Charisse, uh, we both got on the horse after New Year's and the uh, trip down to the Keys. We did really good. You know, we just. Uh, a lot really? Of good seafood. Um, yeah, seafood. Well, yeah, all yes. you know, it's easy where you are to get good fresh fish, then that's healthy for you. You just <sighs> cut I out mean, the like fries and potatoes and and rice well, even. The and biggest let, thing or, is or cook substitute it, brown rice. Cook it at home is the, one of the biggest things. Make your own meals. You know, eat yeah. your own snacks and stuff. You know, just if you're going to grill something, make like you do at home. Make extra grilled chicken, extra grilled pork chops, whatever, and snack on them. You know, yeah, things I, like that. I almost find it. I don't know about you. I almost find it easier to do well on the road than I do at home, and it, 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 and here's why. So it may be different for you, but when I'm at home, you know, like for example, this week we have three nights of basketball games. You know, they may be at home or they may be on the road somewhere. Right. Well, you know, you got to be there at five o'clock, five thirty. We don't leave till eight thirty, mm-hmm. so you're not ready to eat supper before. Yeah. You got to eat after. And all the options are fast food. But when I was right. eating really healthy, I, we'd go through somewhere. The kids get, you know, just say Sonic, for example. They'll get chicken tenders or a burger and fries or tots or whatever. And, and my wife, Kate, eats like a seven-year-old and is tiny. I don't, I, I'm envious. I don't know how she does it. But uh, uh, but I can look at a bucket of tater tots and I gain a pound or two, you know. Right. So what I what I was doing back then, which I've started back doing, but uh, haven't for a couple of years, is I just get a couple of grilled chicken sandwiches and just eat the meat. Right. Yep. I mean, yep. you, it sucks because you want a supersonic cheeseburger, but you just 
it's just what but you got to do. And eventually, when you get a little older, everybody's different. Everybody's metabolism, everything <laughs> works different. For me, I just feel better. If I eat crap, I feel crap. That's just all yeah. there is to it. Like, I, if I, the few times I did slip and see for, and it would be hard for us because I know, like, at your house, too, you got kids, so you got to have different kinds of food for them. Right. You know, like, for me, at home's easy. Our method is we just don't have it. Like, we don't have. Don't buy it. Yeah. We don't buy it. There, Like, you can go in our cab. There is no cookies. There is no, there's nothing like that. There's no, right. nothing like that. You know, if you want something like that, there's dark chocolate, there's almonds, there's peanut butter. You can make, you know, there's bananas. I mean, you can get something, but it, we just, because if it was, I'd get drunk and go eat the whole thing in one night. Right. So the only things bad I have had was Aunt Paula and Gran were here staying with Lola while we were gone. Well, you got to so, do that. You got to so, I mean, Whatever they brought, we ate, and then whatever they left. So last night I had a Klondike bar, crunchy Klondike, because they left. We would never have ice cream. We don't have ice cream in our fridge because I'll get, I'll do like I did last night. I'll eat it. So yeah, we just what? we do we do good at that, uh, and we have good options. But it, like anybody, you get out and about and like traveling, like if we're working and stuff, that's when you, let's just pull in here and get something. And we yeah, we're just trying to tighten that down because we're notorious. Or let's go over here and have an appetizer and a beer at our neighborhood joint, and next thing you know, hey, it's one hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> you know, right. or it's like a Tuesday, and we're like, we ate, I ate up, you know, a. Uh, Philly cheesesteak. I would have. I don't need. I didn't need that. Right. But well, I, it's yeah, it's delicious. So but, yeah. yeah. So so it's easier for you and uh, the kids play a major role. You know, because mm -hmm. um, for me and so out there on the road, I'm like a a Boy Scout, just like you are. Like I can just eat. Like for 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 example, uh, last night Kate made, which I never even heard of. I mean, it was fantastic, but. She made lasagna soup, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Right. So last night, I just ate the soupy part, and I left out the cheese and the uh, the noodles because, like, you put your own noodles in it. So gotcha. I just left out the noodles, and so it wasn't great, but it was better than better than with all that other stuff. And um, But on the road, I mean, we have the ability to – for for after-show food, for example, for those listening, I mean, we can get – we can get um, grilled chicken and, and some steamed vegetables for after show rather than having cheeseburgers and chicken wings and pizzas and that kind of stuff. And we just, you and I just have to hold each other accountable and be disciplined enough to do so. Um, and at, at the end of the day, kind of like you guys at home, if it ain't there and that, that good stuff is there, you will, you'll eat the good stuff you'll eat if that, you're yeah. hungry enough. It, yep. Is it as fun? Is it as good? Hell no, it ain't. But if you want to feel good, look a little better, it's just what yeah, you and, do. And some stuff you'll just, you know, your taste buds change too. Some stuff you just end up liking and craving more. Like me now, like we always talk about like oysters. Like I just thought about, I don't know why I just thought about that. But it's good, healthy food, all that. I love, you'd ask me that 10 years ago, no way. You know yeah. what I mean? So your stuff changes to what you eat too. So like, I know like you, you used to do it and Cherise did it and I've started doing it too. Just a handful of good turkey, like roasted turkey or something, deli turkey, just a handful yep. of regular old turkey. I mean, that's sometimes you just crave that stuff. More, You will eventually crave that like you do cheeseburgers. And stuff. Yeah. Well, what yeah. I ate today for lunch, that's a good, like, kind of where I was going. Stomach. That's where I was going with the uh, lasagna soup thing. I appreciate right. you saying that because I can't, it reminded me. So today I pulled out the lasagna soup and I go, boy, that sounds good. I put it back. I ate like six, eight pieces of deli turkey, no bread, no cheese, no nothing, with like three or four. Uh, uh, Clawson makes these hot and spicy pickles, which I love. Mm. And so just ate the turkey with some pickles because pickles are really low in fat. The, the sodium's not great, but... I got to have a little salt. You, and you like so, your sodium, too, buddy. You're right. a salt guy. <laughs> dang right. So, so let us know. So the point is, long long and short of it, uh, JR and I are going to try our best to do do yep. well um, this year. Hey, we're going to be with the King here in, in, in a couple of months. We got to be uh, on point. So I'm trying, That's to, right. trying to get to where uh, uh, I feel pretty good about myself before we get to play with George Strait here in Little Rock and then – Try to keep it rolling all year. So y'all let us know. Maybe we should, uh, you know, on our radio show, uh, one of my co-hosts uh, on the show, and then a uh, long time, long time uh, staple in Arkansas radio here on an afternoon show called Drive Time Sports, Randy Rainwater. They're having a weight loss challenge. 
Oh, nice. First, uh, first to lose 30 pounds. And so uh, in two weeks, my co-host, David Basil, has lost 16 pounds. Get him, Basil. I hear yeah. you. And, uh, What's he doing? And uh, eating right and working out? Eating right. But, man, I give him a hard time because he still drinks about 20 Diet Cokes a day. <laughs> oh, Lord. And, and you tell him what DDP says about a Diet Coke? If you're I need drink to tell diet, him. I forgot about if, that, but I need to tell him. Yeah. If you're going to drink a Diet Coke, you might as well drink a regular Coke. If you're going to drink a regular Coke, I'd rather you snort Coke because that's yeah. how bad they are for you. They're terrible. I need to, anyway. I need to, I need to uh, tell him that. I forgot it, but – um and then the other guy has lost a total i believe of 12 pounds so in two weeks so they're doing really good but i thought maybe for our listeners they they might enjoy that if you and i and it it could be a weight thing it could be uh i definitely got the most i definitely got the most to lose there ain't no doubt about that yeah or it could be a body fat percentage or i don't know just to make it just to make it fun and help you and i Hold yeah. hold hold ourselves account, hold each other accountable, but that uh, we don't have fun. to do that. But let us know with the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast on, on social media if if you have any ideas or if you think that might yeah. be something fun and and uh, you know have you guys wanting to check back in each and every week. Uh, that could be motivating, podcast. and that could be motivating for us. You know, I just thought about that too. You know what? And we could definitely do that. You know, one for me, I would like to do, and I've said this for years now. I'd like to get just in good enough shape where I can go run a mile again, like I used to. Yeah. Just run yeah. a mile and and not have to stop or you feel like I will fall out. Not a not a, a sub seven minute mile or anything, but just be able to jog a mile and know I can do it. I I mean I'm sure I could. I don't know. I don't know. It's been, I, I've played basketball and I know I've run a mile, but to something like that because it's been so long and you know like lose lose a little weight, my back will feel better, my knees will feel better. So yeah, we just like you said, hold yeah. each other accountable. And like for me, I got to learn to quit slipping. Oh, that was a good grilled chicken sandwich. Let me go check on the band guys and then go over and eat a piece of their pizza. Right. So <laughs> I just got to do better. So, yeah, but yeah, but, I, I like it. Good idea. Hey, you mentioned um, you mentioned the ha- use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, which is awesome. <laughs> we definitely want to encourage everybody to keep doing that. Anytime you interact with us on social media at Jr. The Handler at Justin Cole Moore. Uh, wanted to mention too. I talked to Cody earlier today, and we've actually got on a couple of new. Uh, platforms that host podcasts or uh, podcasts where you can find us and listen to this podcast there was a few we weren't on and this and that stuff so cody's got it all dialed up now we're on a couple of new ones like uh, i know iheart radio uh, pod chaser uh youtube apple podcast spotify amazon music stitcher pandora uh, and Google Podcasts. We're on everything now. So you can go to Great. the Instagram page on uh, Justin Moore Podcast Instagram page and go to the link on there. It'll get, sh- pull all those down. You can pick any one of those to go listen from. So make sure to do that. We appreciate the support. And, um, yeah, use the hashtag. And if it's just if it's not Justin Colmore with the little blue check mark beside it, it is not him. I, I Literally, before we got on today, we talk about this every week. I'm getting tired of it. I had to go through and – about 20 different ones. Uh, hey, you want to collab? You want? Hey, do, I mean, it's just so ridiculous, these scams. Yeah. I mean, it just it's, never ends. It's it's crazy. The world's crazy and getting crazier. So, um, you know, JR just mentioned that you can, you can find us anywhere that you get podcasts now. I was uh, – um, I wasn't privy to the fact that we weren't before, but that's exciting news. Um, yep. Also – while we're discussing that go listen to this first each week and then if you got more time to drive or whatever you want to want to find something else the same is uh same goes for the daily radio show that i'm on morning mayhem yep morning mayhem so you can find it every day i'm talking the minute or two after we're finished at 10 a.m central you can find it anywhere so it, in theory, is a podcast also. You can listen to it any time. Gotcha. So you can go listen to this podcast and then go straight from that. These are typically hour and a half-ish, two hours. And then you got four more hours of stuff wow. uh, to listen to. So that can be your radio all day. Man, uh, if I was a hog, if I, I mean, not that I don't love the hogs, but boy, if I was a hog fan, man, that's exciting. Yeah. yeah I just mean, to, just, and just you guys are in, rocking. Yeah, just type in Morning Mayhem. Um, Mayhem is M A Y H E M. So just know, while you mentioned that, I wanted to yeah. throw that out there. Well, yeah, and I know I listen to it in live time when I get to check in, and I do it on the iTunes app. So you can definitely listen to it that way as well. I know that's the way I pull up at that's real time me. when I'm. 
Yep. So that's another good way. So, yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, glad we got all that out there. And, yeah, check in, download them, save them for later. That's what I do. Save them, you know, download them on your phone. That way if you get somewhere and get stuck, you're like, well, I got something to listen to, you know. And um, it'll be better than most of the other crap you can find on there. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, what else for was sure. I going to talk about today? Oh, I had to mention real quick, last week we had meant, or last time we talked, we talked about the song Guns. Glad to report that Guns is now back up on all platforms like we were just talking about. You can find that on – Anywhere you get albums and Justin's music, um, it's back there. I don't know the specifics on that. I know we raised a little ruckus. It got a little press. Uh, what, what was it? The plan? It just kind of was natural, but um, not sure if it I was didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's back on now. No, I didn't uh, know we sure. raised a little. Well, it was a couple or, of the outlets that talked about it. Hey, JM's pissed off that they song this and that, and I'm replying to some social media Oh, from media the stuff. podcast, I got you. Right, from talking about it on the podcast, yeah. But, so, but uh, I don't know if it was uh, a censorship <laughs> thing or if it was some um, uh, songwriter royalty stuff, but whatever how it no, worked out, it's it was just, it had to be a censorship thing because that that was in the same group of songs as any other song on that record. So, yeah. Well. Whatever we did, it worked because it's back Whatever. on now. Well, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, great. And 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 yep. credit goes to uh, – forgive me for not knowing uh, who that was that pointed that out, but thank you again. And I would yeah. encourage you in the future, anything else like that, please let us know because we have we both – our entire team has a million things, a million irons in the fire at any point in time. And so we – obviously there are things that slip through the cracks um, like that. And, <clears throat> and if there's one thing I despise, it's censor censorship. And so I, I appreciate uh, whomever that was uh, filling us in on that, and yes. and uh, it's back. So yep. great. Yeah, a, a lot of people chimed in with stuff on that, letting, keeping us updated. I want to appreciate y'all on all the different platforms from doing that. Yeah, we got to keep on rocking in the free world. Um, hey, I was going to talk about something that just was a random thought as I was in here in my studio getting set up today. As I'm going to redo, this might be the last time you see my studio look this way, or it'll be similar, but I'm going to rearrange some stuff. But Moving some stuff around, I realized it's pretty chilly in here, which I like, as you know. And I was thinking, I wonder what the difference in the temperature in my studio and Justin's is right now. <laughs> because you would be freezing in here. Do you know, know what, you what yours is? I know what the I know I turned it up one notch just to cut knock the chill off. I was just saying, because it it is heated and cooled, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah I, oh, that's I, what I, I could, I could, yeah. oh, I could blow myself out if I wanted to. I just like it chilly. I was always hot here in the summertime. I was gonna trying to blow a fan even with the air on because I don't want the air running. But uh, it's 64 degrees in my studio right now. Oh, well, you would probably be surprised at, I mean, it mine's much warmer than that, but you'd probably be surprised what mine's on. It's got to be take a guess? 70, 71, too. 69. 69, really? Yeah. Wow, you're up. You're upstairs, too. You get, you get a little. You're probably and I've got a sweatshirt on, you know. Yeah. So I got you probably got a t-shirt shirt on. <laughs> yeah, I've got an athletic <laughs> shirt on, and I'm on the ground floor on concrete. But, uh, but yeah, so I thought about that earlier because I was thinking – I, my, my studio is pretty chilly, and I said, bet Justin's ain't. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, what's the weather like? Because it's, it's cold here. I know we texted or talked a couple days ago, and it was cold in Arkansas. It's gotten it's rained here yeah. all last night and all today today, <clears throat> just drizzling and cold. Yeah, it was really cold here last week. I mean, there were a couple of days where the high was – the high was in the, I mean, low to mid-30s, maybe 35, 36, something like Ooh. that. And, uh, I mean – when that's the high now, that's 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 cold for OJM. Yeah, for yeah that sure. was like our, uh, that was about our low on the couple days we had. It was in the mid thirties. And so let's see, we've got uh, it, right currently it's forty eight here, and the high's fifty, um, which I guess we probably already hit that. Um, but uh, We've got another few days where it's basically the same thing, you know, low of mid twenties to fifty, uh, and then beginning Sunday it warms back up to what I would consider a lot more normal for here during the winter. Um, you know, highs in the the low to mid sixties. Um, I would guess our median high for the winter would be somewhere around fifty eight. Or 60, 60, 58, right. 62, something like that. Where I'm at in Arkansas. And elevation, in, in our case, the lack there uh, plays a role in that too. Um, right. So, Yeah, we're a good bit cooler than, than the average. Uh, 
But like I said, I, yeah. I ain't complaining. I, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just know, I, I'm having my uh, I'm having my today. My 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 little cousin came and he's an electrician. Uh, it's good to have a first cousin that's an electrician. I tell you that yeah. much. Uh, it's good to have a. It's good to have somebody at anything. Right. It's good to right. have a. It's good to have a person that can do something. But to have that that you can trust and right. And, uh, you know, one of my little cousins who's like my brother is a welder, like super talented at welding. Awesome. Uh, Brock, and then my right. other one, uh, first cousin, it's like my little brother. Uh, is an electrician, Dusty. So he anyway, he came over working on my generators today. Uh, we have the Generax. For those out there listening, know what that is. They're the ones that just automatically come on when your electricity goes out, and they're expensive uh, to put in. Uh, but when you live out in a rural area, at least where I live, if our let's say our electricity goes off. It may not come on for eight, ten days, right? Because we're a, we're not a priority at all. And you y'all, know, if you're and y'all get tornadoes to, through there and all that. Yeah, if you're closer to one of the cities, um, or a suburb of Little Rock, for example, here, or probably where you are, you guys are probably a priority. You, you, you I mean, the worst case scenario, you're at, you're without it a day. Uh, I yeah. mean, unless you have a terrible hurricane like, like you guys yeah. have dealt with. We live with. close I mean, to the police station, so we're, <clears throat> we're, we are pretty good where we're at. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, but anyway, we had a bad thunderstorm. I guess it was probably six, eight weeks ago. And and uh, the, the electricity goes out, and I'm like, why ain't the generator running? Um, okay, I, now I can hear one of them, but none of the lights are working. I come to come out to my office area, which is in a pool house area. It's working. I'm like, oh, okay. There must be something wrong. I have two generators, and one runs one, and one runs the other. Well, long story short, I'm out there in a damn thunderstorm. I think we might have talked about it on here, and I cannot get it going. Uh, and so, long and short of it, I, I'm having I'm having him fix them because um, I, I got to thinking I need to get those serviced. Yep. Put new batteries because we've been here five, six years and haven't done any of the above. Yep. And I won't think about it again until the electricity goes out and we ain't got lights in the house again. Exactly. Well, so yep. so I, I, I'm proud of myself for being a little bit on top of that. Yep. So you know, we'll be prepared because and, and what what led me down this path was us talking about weather. And, and yep. so – um it's been a little cool so we're not out of the woods yet here as as far as ice we don't get much snow sometimes you do get some ice um you know we did get we did get a little bit of snow a couple of weeks ago and i'm thinking oh no i didn't get i mean it it didn't stick or anything like that right. but it snowed for 45 minutes to an hour right and and so i thought oh no if we lose electricity yeah <laughs> well so it, you, you, know, you just I'm have glad to. i'm having that worked on Right, you just have to like I, we have we have the same thing. I'm going to get a full in house thing here f- just for when hurricanes happen because like, the only time we needed it was then, and you know we didn't have it, and we were out of power for a week or so, you know. Um, and it's not much to do when everything's soaking wet. But anyway, I, so I ran mine this year, but I heard that same story from a lot of our friends in Louisiana, um, down in Homa, that said a lot of their generators didn't kick on. Same thing, they hadn't been serviced in so long that some of the starters and car, uh, different mechanical stuff in the systems were just they need to be serviced ever so often. Yeah. Well, everybody's just planning on them. They hadn't used them. They figure it's okay, but uh, some certain things didn't work and things like that. So yeah, if you got a <laughs> you generator, you never know till it's too late. Right. So if you, you got go, a generator, oh no. Yep, service it every year. Just make it an annual thing. That way, and you'll know, always be on top of it. That's but, what uh, that's what my cousin said. He goes, just just make it a habit of doing it. He said, you don't really have to do it every year. He said, but if you want to be overly safe, you might as well. And so yeah. I'm gonna try to make it a habit of getting it done once a year or doing it myself. I didn't realize really the simplicity in it because you know me, I'm not a. I can do very basic things. You know, as far as a handyman. You sing really well. You sing really well. I can sing. I mean, but, you know, you and I, I, you're a much better 
a carpenter than I am, but like you and I messing with tractors and stuff like yeah. that, like we can do the basic fundamental yeah, things. I'm not very mechanically inclined. That's, that's for certain. But yeah, I've learned, you know, we're old enough now we've seen it and had to deal with it enough. You learn a few things over the years. Yeah. So, so I, I learned today. I didn't, I wasn't aware of this, but he explained it to me. He said, look, what a service is on one of these means checking the battery or changing it, whatever. Which my batteries have been good for five years, so you shouldn't have to change them, but ever three, four years, something like that. Right. Um, but it's just changing the the filter and changing the oil. I right. thought, oh well, that's it. I can do that. I I mean, right. you know, I can do that's basic stuff. So now it, it just sounds daunting when you tell me service a generator, and I'm talking these are <laughs> these are massive generators. <laughs> yeah, right. They're not just some little piddly yeah small wattage generate so i was like oh okay i got i got you now i, I can do that so yeah and if you, like you said if you live off somewhere and most people do because a lot of our uh, listeners and your fans are, are live in rural america or, or along the coast here we have hurricanes or if you live where there's tornadoes or just i mean generators key you just never know mm-hmm. i mean you could get iced out or cold out or you just need generators to work on your farm when you don't have power places so but yeah so uh, this is a good reminder i, I brought yep. it up because we were talking about weather and uh for those out there who who may have uh the same living arrangements as, as myself where you kind of have to prepare for for these things um you know it, it, it's it's nice to to be prepared prior to rather than going damn it why didn't we get this done before so anybody got generators out there like mine that instantly kick on if you haven't had them serviced in a year go do that and check them out because you, you you'll be left in the cold literally if if you don't right and I'm sure uh, I'm sure we've got some listeners on here that have, have had to deal with that too. If you got any stories or tips on that you want to share with the rest of the listeners, uh, be be sure to use the hashtag Just a More Podcast, and we'll get that on there. And I've been accumulating some Q and A, uh, and we'll do some of that next week. I know we did a little last week. Um, had a few things I noticed, um, and a few um, things that everybody noticed, but uh, thought we'd do that. Some of it had me. We'll save the – well, I'll do the good stuff first. I had a couple of good things I don't know you may, be, may or may not be aware of, probably not, but uh, our old drummer, Nate, and his uh, wife, Vanessa, are expecting a baby boy. Oh, I didn't know that. that. Of, That's just awesome. just saw that a few days ago, so uh, shout out to Nate and Vanessa. Yeah, Sexton. I need to send him a text. That's awesome. Yep, back there in Nashville. I know it's going to be a beautiful boy, um, so congrats to them. If it and, looks like uh, her. Right. <laughs> It'll come out with gloves on like Nate. <laughs> looking kind of like. A little like nasty. A, a little Willie Nelson looking guy. Little oh, nasty. Little guy. nasty. <laughs> yep. Um, and then our long, your longtime lighting director, who still is part of the family, uh, Mr. Aaron Luke, is getting married. Uh, it's all where he, she said yes picture a couple days nice. ago. Nice. So a couple yeah. cool things to form, you know, family members, former uh, Yeah, Luke's co-workers. been a part of the family uh, in a, a ton of different capacities over the year. He was actually on the road for uh, with us for, I forget how many years, but a number of years. And and then um, uh, has, has done some other things uh, in the business since then that have also yeah. led him back to helping us out at times, working with us at times creatively. Yeah. Yeah, so he that's exciting. The, Congrats, brother. This, yeah, he helps come in and set, help with the lighting stuff, and he's he did a lot of shows with us last year too. Till we he got uh, Derek, till we found Derek full time. Hey, and yeah, he tours. He tours with uh, I can't remember the name of the band. It's some huge uh, uh, na- uh, international rock. band that does these big pop kind of rock thing. I think or something. Pop, big lights, rock, or, something. some <laughs> some big thing. He he loves it. You know, I don't I don't know the band, yeah. but it's cool. But congrats to them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of show stuff, and I don't know if you want to get into this now or if you want to take a break and then get into it, but I was going to talk about, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, had had we announced the tour the la- prior to the last episode we had out? Yes, we did. We did. Okay. Okay. We did, well, yes. then never mind. I, I was going to talk about our new tour. Um, but I guess we did that a couple of weeks back. Yeah, we did the announcement. We can talk about it a little again, too, though, if you want to. It's well, going to be great. Well, well, part of it, what I was just going to mention is that uh, I spoke with Granger uh, Smith, 
uh, who's out with us are going to be out with us. We're going to start that the country on it tour in April. And, um, and if I'm being redundant, and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago on the show, then here you go. I'm gonna, you're going to hear it again. But uh, but gr- we're excited to have Granger out with us. And, uh, you know, Granger, super talented musician who I'm a fan of his music. But uh, but what just an inspiring story, he and his wife and, and their journey over the past few years in particular uh, with the loss of a child and and uh the 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 grace with which they've they've handled uh raising their other now three children uh, because they just had a little baby boy uh, not 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 even a year ago um it just is really inspiring so we're gonna get granger on to talk about uh the tour and what's been going on with him um and if i don't think i mentioned this last time i may very well may have when we when we were putting this tour together, I had no idea that he was going to be taking over for After Midnight. No. Kind of I came out no of nowhere. Clue. I don't, did we talk about this last time, JR? Uh, I think briefly, but not, not in depth for sure. So, so I had no idea. Um, and so I was kind of being secret squirrel about my radio gig as well. And I had even fielded questions – from folks when we were putting my radio deal together have have any country music artists had a full-time radio gig as well and i and i said no nobody's ever done it there have been artists myself included who have guest hosted for a week or whatever the case may be but nobody's ever done it daily right so um it's uh, when we got the tour locked up uh, it was right around the time we announced uh, or, or re- had the press release on me uh, taking taking on this role as co-host of a radio a daily talk show. Um, they he he and his team did the same thing for After Midnight, which Cody Allen was was there f- doing for a long time and a buddy of ours. We need to get him on as well. I know. Yes. Uh, we've talked about that, and I'm curious. It'd be good, a perfect time to get him on. See what he's doing. What's he, is he just retired? Is there that much money in radio? Or yeah, what? right. Um, <laughs> uh, but might be why Granger up. jumped on that job. He said, "Hey, yeah, we need to catch up with out. him too." But I did. But I spoke with Granger here a week or so ago and said, "Man, I can't believe this worked out the way it did. It's kind of uh, it's so unique and and you know that we both are doing this and the fact that we put this tour together with having no knowledge of either of either of us doing it." It's kind of – there's some fun irony there we can, we yeah. can kind of discuss. So we're going to get him on. We may do that next week. We talked about doing it this week, but uh, we may do that next week or we may wait till closer uh, to the tour kicking off in April. But we'll have him coming up. Um, and we're also uh, – Jeff, our production manager, and Raj, our, our band leader, I've been in contact with over the last couple of weeks about putting a brand-new show together. So – um i think we've done the same show now for for a couple of years and that's kind of the that's kind of what we we've done over the years is when we feel as though we've been out there enough time with the same show to hit most of the markets we try to put a brand new show together so we we never want you guys to to see the same show twice unless it's you know, you go to a show on Friday night and you're there again Saturday, wherever right. we are. It's within driving distance. So we're putting a brand new show together. We're going into tour rehearsals here shortly, and and we're back on the road, brother. And um, you know, we we do have a one off the fifth. If there's anybody down in in uh, the Orlando area, we'll be at Sea World the fifth. Yep. Um, and, and but but I, when we really kind of start hitting the road, um for runs is is a couple of weeks past that or three weeks past that so we'll, yep. maybe a month but not i don't think quite a month maybe yeah we'll be in jackson mississippi on february 16th um that's going to be uh, a wednesday at the rodeo the dixie yeah. national rodeo with in my i mean that, that's where me and granddaddy first come seeing y'all yep and, and he saw the truck tractor trailer yep, he, Yep, and he said, boy, them boys sure do like some hot stuff because you and Joey were taking scoops, tortilla chips, and putting individually like a shot of hot sauce on each chip. Granddaddy's like, boy, them boys sure do like some hot stuff, don't they? I said, yeah, don't they, they do. Don't they? 
And then, uh, and then we're going back to one of our favorite places to play and party is and uh, the the stockyards of Fort Worth, Texas, on the twenty fifth of February. We'll be back at world famous Billy Bob. So yeah, that's what we got in March. We got a couple shows. They don't, they're all they're, they're not private. They're wide open. So uh, yeah, uh, February fifth, February sixteenth, and uh, February twenty fifth. So y'all check that out. Go to justinmoremusic.com. You can see all the dates that we've got confirmed for this year so far. Got a bunch of cool stuff coming up. Uh, it's gonna be good. I look forward to a fun year for sure. And uh, yeah, a new show. Well, and y'all and y'all do the same show, but you throughout the year when songs come and go or new songs things, y'all y'all pull and match and move and uh, might pull one out for a while, then pop a new one in, or you'll throw in a uh, I want to then you, or one night you just may randomly say uh, hold the band back, uh, get me an acoustic. I just want to go out and do a couple acoustic, and then you might end up doing a medley of three or four old songs. Well, then that sticks around for three months. You just never know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, yeah. But, it, you know. but as far as transitions and, right. you know, we, we, you know, some inevitably we're never going to have enough time to play every song everybody wants to hear. We try to do our best, whether it be in a medley or whatever the case may be to, to, to do as many songs or, or pieces of songs as we possibly can. But it, it's, just, it's impossible at this point in our career. And that's thanks to you guys out there listening and country radio that, we, you know, we have, you know, honestly, we, as far as radio goes, we probably have 16, 17 hit songs on radio alone. And then you probably got another eight, 10 songs that are virally hits, if you, if you will. And that's just too, I mean, that, that right there is four hours worth of music if you just go play right. them. And, and so, you know. We'll, we'll, we try to find older songs that maybe weren't on the radio um, that that we know people love um, and do different ones each tour. So, for example, this this past show that we put together, we did, uh, golly, uh, we, we did uh, Run Out of Honky Tonks. We did uh, My Kind of Woman. We did, golly, help me out, Jr. <laughs> um, oh man, I mean, it, there's so many. I mean, they're just yeah. it's it's hard to remember them all. Beer right. time, we did, um, you know. So, but we, but that, you know, that that left out getting to do like there's no tomorrow, uh, or as you guys or... know, it crickets are singing. Uh, no tomorrow, bed of my Chevy. We haven't done guns in a while. Um, you know, so it, it we'll, we'll go back in and, and make sure that you guys get a different experience than you got um, if you saw the show, let's say, over the last two years. Right. Yeah, and it's it's going to be cool, too. And that gets different. we got a new lighting director that's going to be full-time, yeah. so he'll get to be ahead of all that, you know, For instead sure. of coming in and learning somebody else's stuff. And Yeah, it's going to be really cool, man. Got uh, the bands locked and loaded. I've talked to those guys lately. They all seem fired up, ready to get back rocking. I saw Stefan. He's been um, – he's been do he's back on his diet. He's We've been sharing pictures. He's been doing really good. He's trying to ah. – he's ready to get, get clean. He said he's on the program if we get back on it. Uh, I know earlier we had talked about – uh, me and going on my trip, I, I want, we hit on that real quick. Uh, not a whole lot to tell. Yes, yeah, Sharice and I went down to Key West um, for our fifth year wedding anniversary, and we had my buddy Terry Lee Palmer uh, from John Party's band and his wife Chelsea come down and meet us, and uh, we had a good time. It was Terry's birthday. It was our anniversary. The weather was good. Uh, I wouldn't say it was fantastic. It was good, but there was a couple days it was pretty windy, and uh, you know, compared to anywhere else, it was great. But uh, but you know, it, it was only a couple days. It was really you know mid 70s or higher the rest of the time it was floating around 70 and it could <laughs> rainy day here or there but it was fine it was beautiful shout out to frank uh, our buddy frank up in pennsylvania for uh, let me stay at his place beautiful place there on shark key um you know wake up to the sunset go to bed the, the the moon it was actually a full moon most of that week so that was pretty at night you sit up on the balcony and the moon shining on the water and the little flats i mean the water out in front of us went I don't know, a couple hundred yards and all this stuff. I sent you some pictures, but it couldn't have been more than a foot or two deep. I mean, it was just, it was wild. Yeah, so is that like, um, how would you describe the water that the house was on? Like, like it was, it was just it on was a little island kinda, and the, wa the water kinda was. Kind run, of uh, run off from the ocean or the. No, it, it's, it's the, the Gulf the of Gulf? Mexico. It's, I mean, the Gulf. It, it's the Gulf. It's just kind of like in between the little uh, mangrove forest and the little islands and the little keys and stuff, just the flats. I guess you call it the flats. They had channels and stuff. You can see where boats were going through, like fishing boats and stuff, you know, 
normal size ones, but it was just real flat. You know, it was real vegetated. It was a lot of the mangroves. If anybody's been down in Florida, the mangrove forest and the mangrove patches, it, it looks like it looks like trees, little bushes, but they're just growing in the water. They don't, there's not really dirt under them or anything. Uh, so it was like that, but it was only a foot or two deep. Most of the spots. Sharice saw a shark one day. I went out and got to no see kidding. some of it. It was, it was up in the right, weeds. Like right off to, the, right off the back. I mean, right, right there. Right. So there, you right wouldn't there. be wading off into that water. Yeah. Terry and I were going to get out there, but we, we couldn't, the piers messed up. He's getting it redone. So, oh yeah, I would get in there. I'm not, it was a small shark and it was, I wouldn't be but you know what, coming after me. You know, we're, uh, what's there if small sharks are there big sharks yeah maybe <laughs> i don't know it's pretty it's pretty shallow but no, I'm, I'm I, I wouldn't kidding. be i wouldn't be sharice of course and you know his wife they didn't want to get in that part but that terry and i have swam and dove in that those waters before i'm, I'm pretty familiar with the keys and stuff now obviously the, like anywhere there's always a chance of something crazy happening but um I, and you I and i are kind of in the same boat um you can explain this to, to people a lot better than me because i've kind of stolen this I, this this uh take i guess from you you know i'm not a huge fan of being in the ocean I, like i i get in the ocean to about my collarbone and i don't stay there very very much like right. i mean usually i'm chest high or waist high or where yeah. i can kind of sit and yeah. still have my head above water i don't wait off out there too far and, uh -uh. and so yeah, I'm unless I know, you know, like if I'm the time and I hadn't been in a long time, but scuba diving, I'm I'm comfortable getting in the water and getting in deeper water. But just around the, uh, I don't mind free diving a little as long as it's a safe little area. Like the place I talk about us free diving and stuff, it's usually either with a group or in some area, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm not the most salt. I grew up on freshwater, so I'm I'm pretty confident in freshwater. Just gotta watch out for snakes. Um, but saltwater, yeah, you don't know that stuff can sting you and bite you and all that, <clears> but. I would play in that area where we were at. It was pretty, and like I said, I'm pretty familiar with it from being down there. And there's really just not not a lot of the same things we have. They don't have like say um, cotton mouths and and you know things like that, water moccasins yeah. and stuff. And <clears throat> and uh, there, but you got to worry about the other stuff like jellyfish. But it was pretty, and we had a good time, and we're glad to get back and uh, get Sharice's back working. Uh, she's got a showing tomorrow. Uh, if anybody's looking to buy real estate in Baldwin County or South Alabama or Louisiana, uh, hit me up and I can put you in touch with the best real estate on, on the coast, uh, illustrious wife. Uh, she's been rocking and I've been, I've been on the phone the last two days, uh, getting ready for all this tour stuff. I think I've talked to everybody in our organization, everybody we've got some new people, some old people. So I've been working on that and I was anxious about doing this podcast today. Cause I know we had a lot of catching up to do cause you and I've texted some and talked some, but not a whole lot. Um, so are yeah, you like good. me good, good vacation I, but glad to be home I, th I think i mentioned it a couple two or three weeks ago are you like me I, it, it, normally normally when we're getting to the end of this big vacation for us which we've discussed at length on here when we take off for the holidays it's it's somewhere between two and three months usually where we don't go do anything as far as road stuff um or we do very very little um and that's if we 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 have to have our arms twisted um normally when we're a couple of weeks out from going back on the road i'm i'm kind of grumpy and like i don't want to leave home you know whereas for some reason i'm really really excited to get back on the road this year um and, and play some play some music man yeah. um uh, which boat are you in? I, you know, I, I think I would attribute my excitement for getting back out there to last year being, you know, we were back on the road, but it wasn't really normal, and I felt like we really couldn't enjoy it. It was always stressful. You're always concerned if this show is going to get canceled, or we're going to get sick, or the travel's crazy. Whereas this year feels to be much more of a normal year. So I, that's what I'm attributing my excitement level being higher to. Um, but I'm, I'm really, really excited. So where do you kind of fall in there? I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm excited because it's trickling in. Even when we picked up this new one off, it was kind of like, uh, like you said, I, you look down the you look down the barrel, it's just not as daunting as it was last year. Every corner you turn, you're like, oh, oh. even our 
first trip out west this year is just a standard issue couple of days and back home kind of what we're used to so right. i think that not looking at it being like oh we got we got a one-off then we got three shows then we got eight days in a row you know none of that it's it's a one-off then it's a a one or two and then it's a week off and then you know so we kind of getting getting about like we normally would do just kind of getting geared up slowly but surely and getting everything in order and then i'm sure we'll ramp up fair and festival season and do our own tour and all that fun stuff and um kind of be more more like you said more normal uh this year so i think that's part of it uh for it's obviously part of it for both of us because we you can feel that you can look at the calendar and say, well, we got this well then we got a couple of days off and it, so it's more normal so i think that's the that relaxes us, make us think it's going to be fine. And um, and two, you know, we, we were we were in the grinder last year, um, so coming up for any length of of time to catch our breath was more than we had gotten all year. So it was kind of like, wow, okay, you know what I mean? It was like if we'd had one week off, we'd have probably been as excited as we are for having three, but or three months or two months because it was just so taxing there towards the end. And uh, yeah, yeah, I went over my so, our schedule. Um, this was about a week ago, and I thought, man, this this looks pretty pretty good here. You know, we go hit it hard for a couple of weeks, and then we got a week off, and then and then the other times we're playing either Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or just Friday, Saturday. That's that's much more normal, and um, I think I'll at least at this point in time, I'm I'm uh, looking at it going, I'm going to have a hell of a year, ha- hell of yep. a time this year, yeah. Uh, because man, I've, I've I've never been more excited. It's 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 funny, man. I I think you just go through phases in life, but I, I, the COVID stuff was was difficult for all of us in a lot of different ways, and you know I just have a newfound appreciation because of the last couple of years and how it pertained to our job. I have a newfound appreciation for for having the opportunity to step on that stage every every chance I get. Last year was hard to appreciate it because it was such a let's just call a spade a spade we worked our asses off last year i mean we busted our asses which is fine and we can do we did it but boy it's gonna be nice to go back out there this year and and just kind of enjoy it because we all got into this line of work because we love it we absolutely love it and um i think this year is going to be uh a great example of why we we love it as much as we do so yeah i'm with you and like i said we're going to a lot of cool places you know um it's it's going to be fun and getting to do it with some good friends and and it's just going to be a good year so i'm with you i'm excited about uh getting back out there it was something i was going to say a minute ago but as usual my mind drifts sometimes well we need to uh, uh we need to do this we we need to uh start making it a goal of ours Early on, at least one day a week, we we hoop, we hoop, at least yes. one day a week, and then hopefully That'd that'll turn into every day we're out there at a show or where it's conducive, um, right? Arenas or or there's a Y nearby. Now we ain't got to be crazy like we used to be. Uh, two on two is difficult because you're either cutting and moving or trying to trying to go to the cup. Or score yep. all the time. Three on three, I think, is our ticket. Yeah, you, you can kind of you can kind of get a little lazy. You can right. you can play more help defense, and you don't have to be uh, uh, singled up on your man as much. Yep. Uh, there's not as much running around. Um, you know, even f- you know, it's funny. Even five on five full court is easier than like two on two half court because right. you're constantly yep. cut cutting moving. Trying to chase the ball down long rebounds. Yeah, yeah. So, you got to go get the ball if it goes down the other end of the court. You don't have anybody yeah. to trade off to go get the ball. And God, for, God forbid you have somebody that, that's uh, a little younger than you, a little overzealous and ready to prove that they're Steph Curry. And you're like, nah, I'm good, man. You can, oh, you can yeah. have it. Like, that's you, why I say I, I'm not out there looking for a contract. I'm just yeah, trying to yeah. get a couple shots yeah. up. But, uh, yeah, but I so think that would be, be good fun. for us. Yeah, for sure. Talking about basketball, we, uh, we, you and I talked about the other day. Our basketball teams are, are doing well again. Uh, we've won a few. Uh, you guys are back on track. Won about a few. Time. The number one team in the country is Auburn, though. That's not cool. We'll edit but, that uh, out. We'll edit. We'll yeah, edit right. that out. Yeah, right. I, but you and I have watched them. We both said the same thing. Boy, they look legit. Man, they look good. Uh, they're they scary. Beat, 
They beat the tar out of Kentucky. They beat tar out of Kentucky the other day, and it was the the score was closer than the game. I mean, it wasn't really even close. They just, I mean, they got two or three. Jr. They got two or three pros, man. Yeah, I mean, they got they two really or three do. pros. I think on our team this year we have we I think we have one, and he won't be yeah. pro next year, in my right. opinion. Hey, speaking of random thought, there's a kid um, from Mobile coming to Arkansas. Oh man, Barry Dunning. I wrote his Dunning Jr. Yep, Dunning Jr. You shocked yep, that I know you, that? <laughs> of course you know that. Yeah, I've watched some. I've watched some stuff Four on him. He look, he, yeah, he look. He looks. He looks salty. He's good. I think he'll be yeah. good for you guys. Big long guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course you knew that. Uh, Barry Dunning but, Jr. Yep. Yep. And uh, there's another kid going somewhere. I saw. Hmm, can't remember now. But anyway, they got two two prospects out of Mobile area going somewhere. Um, and and you know it's weird. I saw this is another random thing. I'm just thinking of things. I got to do better about writing stuff down. My mind. I got to take some of those these mind pills or something. If if uh, if some of these brain um, vitamin companies want to come on as a sponsor, I will definitely endorse them and take them and give you a, right. a, a plug on here because I need some. Um, but I noticed on the uh, today they were doing a mock draft of 2023, and I thought at first it was 2022. So I was strolling through and I was like, I ain't even heard of some of these guys. Well, it's not this coming year, but the next year. And there's all, this is how crazy it is. There's already people from schools. Like, there's a guy from Bama that looks like a lottery pick. that I've, He doesn't even play for us yet. No, <laughs> he's in high we, school. Yeah, so they've already He's in high school, on, yeah. They've already – they've not even seen these guys play anybody. They're already planning on these guys going to be these prospects. They haven't even seen them. That's so crazy to me. Instead of, like me, I'm looking at who are the best juniors and sophomores in the, in the country. Yeah, but You ain't going to hey, – hey, the best juniors and sophomores are going to be – uh, sophomores are going to be playing uh, overseas. Yeah, or on the bench. Because yeah, if you ain't good cool. enough to be pro by junior sophomore year or junior senior year, rather, you probably ain't got the goods to play in the NBA. That's what it's turned into. It really it's has. Crazy. And then now with the uh, with the college, we get on that for a sec with the transfer transfer portal, which is I mean we lost like twelve guys the day after the game, and then yeah. you know today you know I'm looking today it's like well we got Georgia's best receiver, Georgia Tech's best running back, and somebody else's best cornerback coming to us, and I'm like this is this is just I mean I'm glad we're getting some guys to refuel our team, but. It's still it's this just too much. It is just ridiculous when half the teams just decide they go. Everybody's gonna shuffle. You're not gonna know where who plays where. And like yeah, we it, always said too, and you better leave a good name everywhere you go if you ever want to come back run a car dealership or something because you go to swapping teams and it don't work out. You gonna wish you'd have stayed at your first team. Yeah, we had um, we had I don't know. It was the week following our bowl game. We had two of our starting. Uh, db slash safeties uh transfer out one of which was a team captain and it and, and would have been as he would have been a fifth year senior Whoa. like and when you're like are you kidding me really you, you were a captain yeah and and guess where they both went to what would make me matter than anything where did they both go to old miss no lsu yes Oh, my God. So, we play for – it's called the battle of the boot when we play LSU in football. One of yeah. them is, like, swimming across the ground to get the boot this year when we won it in Baton Rouge. And now he's going to go play for that team. Team captain. Team <laughs> captain. Been in Arkansas for four years and transfers to LSU. That's crazy. Crazy. You never know what's, you never know what's, what's going on, but it just is all – it's, it's crazy. I, I will say this, uh, that – Coach Pittman and company have been absolutely just crushing it in the portal, man. It's just – it's been surreal to see. I mean, it, it, it just – we've gotten – we're one of two teams in the country who have gotten – let's see if I can get this stat right. Something to the effect of we're one of two teams in the country who have gotten five – four-star transfer portal guys or something like that and they've come from oklahoma lsu georgia yeah i saw y'all got a couple guys from georgia and alabama we yeah, got, got drew do you too. know drew sanders linebacker i saw I he saw played some for you guys this oh year. yeah he played oh yeah he was a t he was a top 20 recruit overall in the nation the year that he came to alabama but he played some. I think he got hurt, and then somebody replaced him. And I, I, 
I guess he didn't think he was going to get his spot back. I don't know, whatever. But then the LSU guys, this is even crazier. We had two two defensive starters transfer to LSU, and they they had two transfer from LSU to Arkansas. So we just traded. I mean, it's insanity. The whole <laughs> thing is, is insanity. It's like pro. It's like pro ball, man. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, and so, but I, I will say though, I mean. I, at least we believe we got the better end of the deal because the guys that we sent to them were two and three stars. Now, I mean, you right. can't, you know, they've both got a lot of experience and have started in the SEC now, but they're undersized and they're not as quick, and, and I'm sure they'll be good players for them. And, but they were, you know, above average for us, but no, yeah. they, didn't, they didn't stand out necessarily. Right. Um, and we got like four and five stars from them, so I'm going – it's just, it's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. Think I mean, about this. This just popped in my head. Think about this. What about the coaching staff? What do you got to do? You can't, what do you not give them the playbook until the, right, the day before the first game? Because if you leave this that's team, a good you're going to know. I haven't thought about that. Think about this. So my guy leaves Alabama and goes to Arkansas. Well, he knows all of our little signals yeah. and all of our everything. Of the little, if they click clack like this, that means they're going to do that. If they call this, right. that means this. Or that's a good you know point. I haven't thought about that. That's Every a really team, good point. there's no, there's you can't, there's going to be no secrets. It, no, because I mean, the co- guy who left Georgia and goes here is going to say this is what we were doing. The guy who left LSU that goes to Arkansas will say this is what they're doing. I mean, you think about it, that's going to be yeah. weird, isn't it? Yeah, and 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 not a, it's it, it'd be one thing, Jr. If let's say. Just take the kid that transferred to Arkansas from Alabama, okay? Yeah. Just for example, if he transfers to Oregon, well, then no big deal. But we play yeah. each other every year. Right. Or the or the situation where we trade two of our players for LSU's two players. Yeah. And it That's, comes down to four it comes down to fourth and one and you're gonna be like, they only run these four plays. Oh, they called Omaha, that means they're gonna they're running I left. Mean, I mean it's nuts, it man. Could, I, it's, so it's every really, year really, the coaching staff's gonna have to literally change every signal, every yeah. sign. I feel bad pl- for these coaching staffs. Man. Think about I that. I really do. I, well the I, thing just, is, and we've talked we've talked about this on the radio, they're going to have to right now it's the wild, wild west. They're gonna right. have to uh Set some parameters. I mean, they they just have to. There are there are none right now, but they're going to have to set some parameters. But I I'll give you one better. We got a Georgia. I think he's a I think he's a DB safety or cornerback. I don't remember which. Um, I think he's a safety. Shame on you for not knowing, uh, Justin. He's a safety. I do know. You're fired. His name's You're not on the Bayham Br- anymore. Just, His name's hello, Basil. L- Latavius Brini. Okay. He started. Uh, too, just hey, too long. I'm sorry. He's he's no. Get this though. Georgia just won the national championship. Right. They played 13 games total. Guess how many he started? Started. All started. All of them. Eleven all of, of thirteen, and he's leaving Georgia. That's cr- current that national champions. Quarterbacks coming back. Everything. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm totally thrilled with it. So what do you but, leave? What if you leave somewhere and your team wins another? You could have won too, but you. I, that is so weird. I you mean, know, it's it, nuts, it, man. It's just I mean, a like world we, that like said, we're we, not we used went and got to. Georgia's best. We got Georgia's best receiver, their number two guy from I mean, last just, year, who just caught crazy. I don't know the second most touchdowns in receiving yards for them. He just wants to come play for us now, and they just beat us. It's <laughs> crazy. I mean, it's just it, it's hard to comprehend. It really it's is. It's got to be just, something with these agents or NI, the, the, nils, the, nil deals you know, and stuff. Our era. You know, I say our era. We're not the oldest guys, but definitely it wasn't that long ago. There was, there was. You didn't do that. You were playing for pride. You were gonna stick it out, but you did. I mean, just it was just you wanted to play for your. Well, home you were team, playing for the stuff. name on the front of name on the front of the jersey, not the back of the jersey. And now it's kind right. of swapped. Yeah, and it's all about the it's all about the it's crazy. It's a wild west know. out there, brother. Well, well they're really saying is. you know Texas A and M, uh, for example. Uh, it's been rumored, and there's a lot of smoke around it, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's not even illegal. They have the number one recruiting class in the nation right now, and will have. And it's been said that they've paid uh, around $30 million for it. But what happens is big-time boosters set up a, a nonprofit or an LLC for these NIL deals. So let's say... You, you you can sign 30 players. You give each of them a million dollars to sign with A&M. Yep. And I'm just – everybody's going to do that. It ain't going to just right. be A&M. 
but that's the one that has been out there lately. But you know, people talk about coaches' salaries being out of whack, and you know, Saban's making ten million, Kirby, you 12, know, the big something like that, yeah, yeah, the, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Well, a national championship's worth probably a hundred million dollars to a school, you know, yep. every year or whatever. So it's well worth it. But if it works out, so so. Thirty million for a for a top five class, let's say, if that's what it, the going rate is, that's going to be uh, sixty million, and then eighty million, and then one hundred twenty million before you know it, because the highest paid coaches five, six, seven, eight years ago were not making ten or twelve million; they were making four, five, six million. Right, right. I mean, it's just, the whole thing is just berserk right now. Yep, yep. <sighs> It's as crazy as the whole internet influencer thing. I mean, it's just all just out of spiraling, out of control. And uh, so, uh, sorry for you guys that are not uh, sports nerds like us, but you know, you got to let us nerd out a little bit. Oh yeah, a little uh, bit on the well, on the JM podcast. You got to let us nerd yeah. out on sports a little bit. But uh, what? But yeah. Speaking of, do you know what's happening with the NBA right now? Because I haven't really been keeping up. And if you don't Laker, know, that's Laker, okay. I'm just no, curious. You know, I keep up. My, my Pelicans, uh, Zion's been hurt all year, so I hadn't really kept up with them like I need to. They've been sub sub 500. Um, the Russell Westbrook experience out in L.A. has not come to fruition. They, they seem like they just can't stay healthy. So um, uh, the Lakers just actually lost last night to the Heat, so they're sub 500 again, not looking good for them. Um the Bulls are really good this year. Young core there. Bucks are still good in the East. Um, they're letting Kyrie play away games only or something like that because of his deal. Because of non-vaccinated. Yep. Didn't know this, that in Toronto, and Steph told me because he's Canadian, he says, yeah, they really scared, real, you know, real weird back home. Everybody's so, so scared. Um Toronto still play in an empty house. If you Toronto Raptors home games is empty still. Really? I didn't know that. I was listening to Robert Ory's podcast the other day, one of my favorites, the Big Shot Bob podcast. Um, and they were talking about it because Devin Booker was shooting his free throws, and the only fan in there was the Toronto Raptors Raptor, their mascot, and he was behind the goal. And Clay Thompson wanted him to move before he shot free throws, and they're like, come on, man, just shoot the free throw. There's usually 1,000 people behind the goal. So, anyway, I, I was like – because that's when they brought it up, like – Toronto home games are still empty. Wow. So, like, yeah. So, um, that's that. And the NBA, yeah. So, the, the Brooklyn looks good if they're healthy. Uh, some teams out of the West still good. Memphis scaring everybody because John Morant's legit. Um, you know, pretty standard issue. Clay, uh, Clay Thompson's back playing with Steph Curry. So, uh, if they yeah, keep it looks healthy. Like the, and, it looks like they're the favorites, right? Uh, yeah. And Kawhi Leonard's going to come. Sha- that's what Shaq's been saying. The, the right. The, and Kawhi uh, Leonard comes back to play for – the Clippers, so they could be a dark horse later on. But there's still a lot of games left, and it's just like any of these things. Depends on who's hurt and who's healthy, you know. Like yeah. um, and the, the the playoffs, the, the NFL, which will I start on a sad note. Uh, my Saints were out a few weeks ago, and as of today, Sean Payton is stepping down from the New Orleans Saints. Which that is, is a, uh, that's kind of surprising to me. I, I'm not a I don't keep keep up with them as much as you do, but I, I obviously am, um, and. I do keep up with them some because of Kate and her family and yep. you and um are you, I was very surprised by that were you Yeah yes and no I, I kind of had a feeling if we didn't make a run at it it wouldn't be dude we're 70 something million dollars over the cap you know we we spent a lot of resources when Drew was last few years trying to get a team around him to win it all before he left and uh you know Peyton's been around he I don't know he's probably second or third longest tenured coach with the same team in the league I yeah. probably after Tomlin and yeah. a couple of others but and he's uh, a top five coach in the league in my opinion oh yeah 100 percent. He, he go play anywhere I mean, he go anywhere he wants I'm hoping he's doing this I mean this is the craziest scenario of all time of take course. over for Saban <laughs> once he retires I'm just thinking maybe he'll take a year <laughs> or two off he'll come on the he'll come back as an assistant for Saban and then he'll just take over and we'll, we'll ride the Sean Payton train for a while I mean you know right uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's I wonder who they. I wonder who the Saints go get. We're hoping our one of our assistant Dennis Allen will come on and be the guy. He he could he could do it, and then everybody's wanting to go get be enemy from Kansas City, which he'll be the top somebody will want to go get. Um, but yeah, how about that? No Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady this year in the Super Bowl or in the uh, yeah. division playoffs. 
Well, I mean, What's it, some, and some fantastic games. I mean, wow. There have been awesome games. We've actually been debating the the overtime rule on the on the radio show uh, because it's garbage. Garbage. That was my take. Garbage. I was I was opposite of one of my co hosts, and we kind of went back and forth on it. Here's my thing. Kansas City game against the Bills uh, this past weekend, arguably the greatest playoff game of all time, or at least in the last 30, 40 years. I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. 25 points scored in the last two minutes. I mean, two quarterbacks who could not have played better football games. And yep. Patrick Mahomes and, and Allen. I'm going to tell you what now. Allen is for real. That dude yeah, is and he's, legit. Yeah, and he said his feet don't do good in the cold. I'm like, I'd hate to see him in good weather. I joke yeah. with scat. And, and so Side arm. Just, I mean, him and Mahomes just, both. I mean, just. Yeah, you just hated to see. You hated to see it in where he didn't have an opportunity to match Mahomes right, in overtime. Right. And so my suggestion with overtime was this. Keep it the same as it is. It's a very simple, just one little change. If Rather than if the team who wins the toss scores a touchdown, it's over. The other team gets the next possession to match it. Right. If they, if they don't match it, game's over. If they do match it, then you play normal overtime rules. That is so simple. Yeah, so there's simple. Just what fan too- didn't want to – See them quarterbacks go back and forth for another eight, ten minutes. Right. Everybody watching. No, there's way too much weighing on the flip of a coin. We've said it, that's been for years. Everybody's known that it's too much deciding on the flip of a coin. Yeah. I mean, it's, and you it's, have a dis, and you have a decided advantage whether you win or lose that toss or yes. disadvantage. It's way too. Here's much. another thing I came up with today on the air, and I said it kind of tongue in cheek, but. I don't think it's even a bad idea. What if it's the coin toss, if you want to keep the rules the same, what if the coin toss is best two out of three? It's better than just one. <laughs> right, I mean, it's better. Right. I mean, <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Best of five. I know. Yeah, or best of I seven. mean, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I say, I've always so said, just, put some, just the... put some time on the clock. Why don't yeah. we just put ten minutes on the five minutes on the clock? Something half a quarter. Yeah, it's something. So ridiculous. But, but anything anyway. besides that, yeah, it's it's way too much deciding on a coin toss. Uh, but some fantastic games. It looks like we're going to have uh, Joe Burrow leading the the the, the Cincinnati who <laughs> something. Yeah, whatever Burrow. they are. Yeah, so we don't say that. I don't know why they stole uh, our catchphrase and decided to use it and change the words. They couldn't come up with nothing better. But um, versus Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And on the other end, we've got Matthew Stafford leading the Rams versus I'm pulling Jimmy, for Stafford, man. Yeah, Jimmy and the 49ers. Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling for Stafford because he was – he was the Detroit Lions have been a terrible – uh, terrible organization for for decades now. Since we and were kids, and I was watching Barry Sanders, and I'm like, how can this Barry team never Sanders, be good? Yeah, Megatron. And so, I mean, just yeah, t- guys, guys get kind of exiled to Detroit, um, and I love the city of Detroit and the people there, but mm-hmm. the, the organization's been terrible for years. So I'm kind of happy to see him have some success, and I'm kind of pulling for them. A lot of people, I think, are pulling for. The Bengals, because they're kind of the underdog. I can't because Burrow went to LSU. Sorry, yep. Louisiana folks listening. I just can't do it. Um, and he's from Ohio, so he's not even from Louisiana. Stafford's from Texas, and he played at Georgia. At least that's SEC yeah. and Southern. I, I think know. most people in Arkansas, because of the uh, um, just location, I think are pulling for the Chiefs. There's a lot of po- – there's, oh, uh, sure, yeah. there's a lot of Chiefs fans in – in in Arkansas around here, it's either Cowboys, really Cowboys or Chiefs for the most part. Because yeah. if you live up in Northwest Arkansas, you're you're only a few hours from Kansas City, right? You know, where I'm so from, you're... I'm I'm from I'm eight hours from there. But right. um, if you're from the Fayetteville area where the University of Arkansas is, you're three, four, maybe from there, something right. like that. So. And same with uh, why a lot of people pull for like the Cardinals up that way too, because it's I guess it's close. A lot of people in that area, the the Missouri teams, are just like you said, geographically right. close. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So <laughs> but, anyway, I'm glad it's going to be fun to watch. I, I think uh, you know what you have, man. You got you got uh, outside of Garoppolo, I would argue, you got really really good quarterbacks. Um, yeah. playing in these games. And Garoppolo, man, it's amazing. He's There's some crazy stat out there 
where he's won X amount of playoff games, a number of them, without having thrown a touchdown. He just he's a game manager, man. Game he manager, doesn't yeah. he just kind of keeps them ahead of the sticks and they they they're they're really really good defensively. So should be fun um, and a chance for uh, you know the the first time the first time a Super Bowl team has ever played for a Super Bowl on their own home field was last year in Tampa Bay. First time ever. Uh, to which, uh, of course, Tampa Bay won. And the Rams have a chance to do it th- this year again. So that'd be back to back. It's ne- oh, wow. never happened in all these years, and it could be back to back years. So it's the, in LA. The Super Bowl's in, Super- in LA. So, yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm really excited off the football topic, but I'm really excited about the halftime show. Did you see who it is? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, uh, that whole. Oh, that West Coast, scene. they bring it back to West, West Coast, Coast thing? Yes. Oh, no, wow. I'm excited that, about it, man. Yeah. They've been yeah. some duds, man. They're at the, duds. I'm, I'm not going to go down that road, but Super Bowl oh, uh, halftime show has been duds for years. Golly, who, like. who else is it? Uh, a female artist that I you would go, oh, yeah, it's not Missy Elliott. It's, uh, you would know, um, golly. West let Coast. Me, let me look it up real quick. Not Queen Latifah or somebody like that? No. She was huge back back around the time that Eminem came out and all all them. Um, You're going to go, oh, yeah. Oh, Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so it's, uh, okay, so it's, Do- it's Dre, Snoop, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, and Mary J. Blige. Yeah, I saw her on The Queen. I saw her on uh, Tamron Hall the other a couple weeks yeah. ago. Uh, she so. was promoting something, a new book or something. Yeah, that's awesome. I look forward to that. Yeah, it'll be good. Um, get to watch some – some teams really don't have a dog in a fight. I, I guess I'm pulling for a little bit of all of them. We'll see who has the most Bama guys on their team, and I'll let you. I'll circle back, let y'all there know who go. I'm pulling for. Well, That's what I. Do I know there's do. an Ar- hey. there's an Arkansas guy, Brandon Allen, is a backup quarterback for uh, Cincinnati, and then Dre Greenlaw uh, is a starting linebacker for the 49ers from from Fayetteville. So I'm nice, kind of secretly pulling. Uh, for either one of them, but I'm also right. pulling for Stafford because he uh, he's finally got a good team and a good coaching staff, and um, so that should be fun. But, yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to look into that. Hey, talking about that, before we get off sports, I wanted to mention something really cool I got this week. Um, this comes from my buddy Joey Tedford in Greenville, South Carolina. He sent me this, Just. I don't know if you can see it. Wow. He sent me a letter. It's a 1979 uh, Bear Bryant Crimson Tide Coca-Cola bottle that they made after he had won his last championship. On the back, it's got national championships, 61, 64, 65, 73, 78, and 79. My birth year, uh, at this point, he had had 315 wins, uh, winning his football coach in collegiate history at this time, the year I was How cool is that? Very cool. And uh, Joey just said, I think this bottle will be a better place in your studio than it will in my Clemson Tiger measly three championship bottles and other Clemson stuff. Look forward to you and Justin's continued success in the podcast. Great country music. Sure hope the tour will get close to Greenville this year. Uh, only got to go to the Atlanta show with Tracy Lawrence last year. Awesome as always. Till I get to see y'all again. Keep rocking it, brothers. TCB, Joey Ted for Greenville, South Greenville, South Carolina. Thank you, Joey. Appreciate that, brother. We talk, yeah, we talk on social media. That's my buddy. But he uh, he said, man, I got this. I've had it forever. It did look better in your studio. That was. That's and he great. sent me some pictures. His stuff looks cool. I mean, if I was a Clemson guy, he's got a cool setup. He's got some uh, some cool swag. But he sent me this, so I'm gonna put it in the studio. It'll be here, buddy. Even when I rearrange the studio, I'll make sure to have it a good spot. Um, so you can see this. So thank you for that, brother. I appreciate That's that. That's awesome. And um, I know I've got a couple things, Justin, unless you've got something else. We can wrap this thing up and get on down the road. Yeah, I uh, could uh, I could stand to use the restroom if we want to break real quick. for. Okay, let's do that. Right back. Yep, let's take a pause for the calls. We'll be right back here shortly on the Justin Moore Podcast. Have you ever passed a construction site where those tough-looking orange and white machines are working? Skid steer loaders? excavators that's bobcat and that's our sponsor for today's episode now if you think of bobcat as construction equipment only you should take a look over at bobcat.com bobcat makes mowers compact tractors utility vehicles all kinds of equipment you can use on your personal property when you have a bobcat machine in your shed you'll look forward to that list of projects on the weekend go to bobcat.com visit your local dealer and see what i mean 
Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, You can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, but check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live cowboys and plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. We've been catching up on some sports and talking about the tour we're going to go out on, all kinds of fun stuff, the weather, this and that. So good to be back with you guys. This is um, season four of the Justin Moore Podcast. Episode two uh, is the third week in January as we record this. It's come out on Thursday. Um, And, yeah, that'll be Thursday the 27th when this comes out. Uh, I know what last we were talking, Justin, about this and that. I know um, one thing I wanted to talk about before we get completely off sports, and it kind of ties into something we end the show with most weeks, is the uh, number one song in country music on your birthday. And I thought for this week's episode, since I don't know if we're going to talk about him much more, I'm sure we're going to talk about him for the next six, eight months for sure, and probably longer after that. But I uh, figure we do Tom Brady. Possibly the, the the greatest quarterback of all time. I mean, I mean what, what was he a six round pick and comes out and wins seven Super Bowls? I mean, nobody I saw mean, that. I, yeah, and I unfortunately I think we have to remove probably. I mean, I, I'm not a big I, I Brady know. fan, but dude, and Justin, think about this. I was as I'm looking. And he's this 44, up, and he led the league in passing this year. That's what I'm saying, Justin. This guy would have been a senior when I was a sophomore in high school. This is the guy, my senior quarterback. He's still the championship quarterback in the I mean, NFL. He's older crazy. than me. He would have gra- he would have been a senior when I was a sophomore, and he's still playing in the NFL. As yeah, it's it's player. insane. It's insane. It, it really is. So I thought we'd do that. I hate it because I'm not a fan. But damn, you got to. That's what I'm. Hey, so- you got to give credit where credit's due, man. And I knew. I mean, I'm thinking about <laughs> you know, he's 40, and I'm thinking, well, do the math, dude. This guy was like, I, I'm younger than him. And he's still the NFL's best quarter. This is just insane. Led the league. Uh, so I thought we'd do Tom Brady today. His birthday is August 3rd, 77. Uh, do you want to take a stab at what it is? This is – oh, man. This is this is kind of, this is a pretty fitting song. Actually, the artist is a Tennessee native, uh, played piano, had some huge hits. Um, it's 1977. 
Um, it's kind of the it's kind of uh, a poppy kind of song. He played pi- kinda, played piano, played piano a lot. Tennessee. Yeah, it's his main thing. He may Smoky, or may not have Smoky Mountain Rain. Same artist, different song. I, that Smoky Mountain Rain, I think, was later than that. Uh, it was Ronnie Millsap, though, right? Ronnie Millsap, okay. correct? Yes, sir. Um, let's see. Um, <clears throat> what a difference you made in my life. What a, is that? It? <laughs> That's not it. It's a great uh, song, though. Uh, it was. Uh, give me a hint. Don't don't tell me. Well, the word "song" is in the song. Oh, 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 oh. Um. Just like Tom Brady's career. It was. Oh, why am I blanking? It was almost like a song. Oh, it was. It was almost like a song. I was going to try to sing it, but I knew you'd do way better than me. So, yes, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I mean, that's think about song. how fitting that is. That was the number one song, and his his it career and life is like is basically like a song. Somebody could write a quarterback, the oh, ballad of the, the the quarterback. That's him. Oh yeah, his I life mean, was a song. He's the greatest QB of all greatest QB of all time. He's won more Super Bowls than anybody ever. Um, married to a supermodel, kids are perfect. Married I to mean. a supermodel, yeah. <laughs> he's he looks he looks like a model. Yeah, uh, it just. He left a franchise he'd been with for like 60 years, and they still love him and pull for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, get, gets hammered, throws the throws the Lombardi trophy across the boat. Nobody cares. It's just whatever. He's hammered. I mean, cares. just awesome. I mean, all right, I may become a fan now. I know. I just, it's, it's hard. You might have just you know, talked me into it. I know. I pull for the Bucks. You know, I pull for all our, our teams down south. I pull for the Bucks and um, – uh, man, just what, what I was glad we shut him down when the Saints went over there this year. But uh, but man, getting to see, I mean, he's the 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 numbers don't lie. I mean, that's all there is to yeah, it. It's, it's just math, it's man. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Um, you know, and I had another something, Justin. Kind of on a sad note, and this is kind of something we we had to do more in 2020 than uh than I ever want to have to go back and do again. Uh, but we had to do some RIPs, um, and and want to say our prayers and condolences to all these families and friends of these these people we mentioned here real quick because we've had some pretty significant ones over the past month or so since and we haven't got to talk about it on here so i thought we'd run down and some of them pertain to yeah, music and our sure. friends so we'll do that i'll start it off with uh rest in peace to ralph emery i mean one of yeah. the greatest country music broadcasters i mean and historians of our genre that ever will exist I mean, he helped so many careers and influenced country radio and the Opry. And I, I, I kind of, even, yeah, I kind of viewed him. We talked about it on the radio the other day, and they were asking, "Do you know who that?" And I'm like, "Do I know who that is?" <laughs> yeah. When I was when I was eight or nine years old, my parents took me to uh, Nashville on vacation. And back then, for those that don't know, I'm I'm assuming a lot of our listeners probably do know, but if you don't. <laughs> There was a theme park there called Opryland, which is out near the Opry House, not to be confused with the Ryman. And it was awesome. And, and um, I think it closed uh, in about the mid late nineties, ninety six, seven, eight, somewhere yeah, there. Yeah, it, it was a really good theme park. Uh, it or, would I mean, crush at least, today. At least an eight, ten year old kid, I thought it was a great oh, theme yeah. park. And so we went. We went to the Opry. We went to the Opryland. We went to a taping of the Ralph Emery show, and I'll never forget, at that show, I got a shotgun red puppet, or oh, wow. a stuffed, stuffed animal, whatever you, whatever you want to yeah. call it, and it slept with me. You remember shotgun red had the straw yeah. hat, and oh, it, yeah. it, was a, it was a puppet. It was a puppet. And it was like a... a- like a Muppet Sesame Street type thing. Yeah, and and so Ralph Emery to me was like the Johnny Carson, if you will, of country music. Does that yep. make? I mean, would, would oh, you yeah. agree with that? And then I would one hundred percent. Shotgun Red was almost like his Ed McMahon. It was a puppet. Yeah. It, it sounds silly explaining it this way, but if you underst- if you know the show, you'll understand. Go on YouTube and, and look it up. It was ca- Shotgun Red, which was a puppet that, and it was a comedian or guy. Uh, playing him, and I don't remember who it was. We could probably look that up, but 
it was almost like his Ed McMahon, his sidekick. It really was. I mean, yeah. you know, it was cool. I mean, ha- Hell, eighty percent of those old interviews we watch on the bus at night and stuff are Ralph Embry's doing the interview. No, no I mean, doubt. All the ones. No doubt. I mean, all of them. he was he was kind of like the Barbara <laughs> Walters and the Johnny Carson because he would go yeah. out. I mean, you know, like that famous one I, I talk about. We've talked about when Hank Junior, uh, you know, he does the makeup show for when he got hammered oh down in Louisiana. Gosh. Well, they used to have it on That's YouTube. That's classic. You could, yeah, you could find the the makeup to that on YouTube. You can't find it anymore, but it was. Ralph Emery on Hank Jr.'s bus right before he went on stage to do the makeup show. And uh, he's on there saying, now, Ralph, you know how country folks don't say Ralph. They call him Ralph. Ralph. Pedro used to, Uncle Ralph. Uh, now, now, Ralph, anybody knows me, knows whole Bo Cephas ain't in no drinking or drugging. All I'm trying to do is get out here no. and look for some Civil no. War artifacts. And Bo Cephas don't hang, drink. I was no. hanging out with Leonard Skinner and them at a bar earlier today, and somebody must have done something to old Bo Cephas. But, so anyway, Ralph Emery was the guy on all those interviews. He was and the I, guy. I, I, there was, was the one guy. of them. It was him. And I'm not sure he trained to be a an interviewer type, that kind of person or anything, because it just seemed like he, he was, was just so a guy. Good, at, though. Yeah, it, he he was he was a, a broadcast. He worked in radio from back in the day and just worked his way into being, like you said, the Johnny Carson of country music for a long, long time. Yeah. And I would venture just to kind of bring it, I guess, into the uh, the present for folks out there who may not be familiar with Ralph um, and Shotgun Red. Um, I feel like maybe Crook and Chase kind of took the torch from him. Kind of, yeah. Would you agree? Or I, yeah. I may be missing somebody in there, but kind of felt like maybe as far as longevity and the time timing and everything, he yeah. they were kind of next in line, maybe because they've kinda, been doing it a yeah. long time. Yeah. Yeah, when 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 the TNN, the Nashville Network, was big and all that stuff, you know, they were kind of the the newer guys on the block because Ralph had already been doing it for years and years at uh, WSM and yeah. with all the different and stuff. And TNN would crush it right now. Crush, like we're saying, like crush I was saying, crush it. Crush. Imagine that they got so much going on in Nashville, you ain't got nowhere to to to, to poop or sleep now. Uh, imagine if they had um, Opryland again. I mean, it, it would cru- again. It would crush. I mean, yeah. I don't know where they. I mean, put even it now, if C- GMC or GMC GAC would be crushing it, or CMT if they went back to that type of programming, right? They'd be I tell you, it. a good one is the Circle Network. I like you've been no, on yeah, there a few. I agree. Y- y'all yeah, been yeah, on there a few things. Sure. Circle is good. It's on public television. You can, you can't find it everywhere though. Is what I've found. I mean, I have it on uh, Direct TV, I believe. Do you? Yeah. So everybody, if you wanted to go check out some cool country music stuff, and you're not aware of it. The Circle Channel. Uh, it comes on a lot of times. On like my, me and Sharice, we don't pay for television. We use streaming services, and I have um, an antenna like you used to have, where you have the the, the the local channels, and it comes up as one of my local channels on on one of the things. Um, they also sure um, they also air a lot of we've we've talked about Hee Haw on here. They air a lot mm-hmm. of episodes of Hee Haw. The Marty Stewart Show used to yep. air on there. I'm sure it still does. They have all the yep. farming reports and stuff like that too which yep. may be boring to some but you and i find interesting yeah you know yeah and they've got cool new stuff too like i know um uh, natalie stovall from um runaway june she does some different shows on there and then i know they've uh i saw some, uh, clint black and somebody were on there the other day doing a a song who was it? clint black and somebody maybe rodney crowler it, it was just something really cool but it was like from last year or, or you know a couple months ago it was not vintage stuff it was something new they were doing in a nice new studio so they do a lot of cool stuff so check that out got off on a side tension on that but uh ralph emery yeah will be missed um that country music wouldn't be the same without him um another one here uh, not on country music but uh, part of our childhood he we actually talked about him in our segment of greatest tv dads bob saggett passed away unexpectedly uh, a week or two ago um that's a tough one just gotten back out on the road yep back out working full house I mean, legend. Um, and YouTube, again, if you've only known him for Full House, YouTube him some of those Comedy Central roast when he's roasting people. You'll see the other side of it. He, he was, actually pushed the envelope. He's one of the dirtier yeah. comics out there, which yeah. is kind of funny. That he played that part as Danny Tanner. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's yeah. it's um, That was sad, man. And, and the first thing, when you think comedian and you think dying in a hotel room, the first thing you think of is, oh, no, what, what did they take? Or Right. You know, but uh, it it looks as though 
he died of a heart attack or a stroke or something and, and, and just just super sad man he yeah. was young he was in his mid 60s i believe so right our our parents age and yeah just a bummer just just yeah. a bummer and another uh, comedian um which i'm sure is on your list that um has had a lot of uh great roles in movies uh louis anderson yeah just recently yep. passed about yep. uh, i believe it was last friday uh so almost was a in, week yep he was in uh coming to america great yeah, scene, great coming what to a america. great role he was the fry <laughs> yeah. cook wasn't he yes if you work your way up you'll be able fries like me yeah, <laughs> yeah it was he he was good on a lot of stuff he was just funny um yeah, a couple of two great comedians there. Uh, another uh, music, uh, huge, uh, I mean, huge, huge rock star uh, for years and years, Meatloaf. Just lost Meatloaf a few weeks yeah. ago. Or week you know how many ago. albums he sold? 100 million. Yes. Is that not yeah. crazy? Because he really just had, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, because you, you know better than me, but I mean, he really just had one big, huge album, right? Or am I wrong? Well, his, his first <sighs> album in 74 was big. And he had a couple of big hits off that, and that's when people sold a lot of records back. What then. was that so called? Um, that album. Um, it's a very recognizable name. Uh, oh, it was so something. It had like two out of three ain't bad, and yeah, I can't I think, remember the name of that album. Um, something hell. Uh, yeah, it's a really recognizable name. That's why I bring it up, is because you would go, oh yeah, even if you didn't know all the music you would recognize that album name. the name of the I'm album gonna, yeah i'm gonna uh, look it up real heaven, quick while heaven you... or hell something like that though um but yeah meatloaf was was huge and then he had the song of the 90s anything i would do anything for love and that was another that was in the 90s when whitney houston was selling a bunch of records and um you know international that... but he did he did you know he was in uh rocky uh horror picture show on bad Broadway. out of hell bad out of hell yeah yeah that, like you said, I know it was something down there, but you know, he was in uh, movies. I mean, you know, he was yeah. in fight club. He was in, and I've talked about it on here. And if you hadn't seen it, I know it's on YouTube. You can stream it on there for free. The movie roadie <laughs> where, um, uh, meatloaf plays Travis W. Redfish, I've never watched that. Greatest. I should, I should watch that on uh, the bus. Will you, you would love it. It's uh Travis W. Redfish, the world's greatest roadie played by meatloaf. Hank jr. Makes an appearance. Alice Cooper's in there, buddy guy. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, so check that out. But yeah, we're going to miss meatloaf. That was, he was in was Wayne's kind of world. Wayne's world. Yeah. Everything's meatloaf. Fight club. Um, uh, just trying to scan through here and see tenacious D and the pick of destiny. Yep. Um, yeah, just really good career, man. And and, and like I said, and, he was on Broadway. I think he won I mean, just about every award there was. No time he did Grammys over the years. So um, so yeah, rock star, another one, another one down. Uh, talking about some of our rock stars, and this one hits really close to home. I got one more after this, but this one hits really close to home. Talking about rock stars, our buddy Jaron Johnson. Uh, got to mention he unfortunately lost his father um, a week or two ago. Um, Jerry Ray. Um, yeah, Jaron is the Thoughts front man and, and guitar slinger from. To... Yeah, he's the front man and guitar slinger for the Cadillac Three, and uh, yeah, we had him on. Pops. We had him <laughs> had him on last season, and right, and it just just a really good stand up dude. And I, I know, like many of us, I mean, his dad was sounds like his his hero is rock, and but really, really hate that for for he and his family, and I mean, certainly his father, and just sad. Yeah, young, 65, same thing. Our parents' age, Jaron's about our age. You know, it's just uh, it's just a bummer, man. You just, I mean, and, you know, we, like I said, this kind of reminded me of 2020 when about every week we were something, it was, we lost a country star or this or that. It was just one after another. And then we had our own family stuff. And, oh, it's just part of growing up, I guess, just. But it, it, it don't make it any easier. Yeah. So uh, thoughts and prayers yeah. go out to Jaron and his family and all their team and crews and friends and everybody that knew his pops. I'm sure uh, he was a, 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 a cool cat. I saw some pictures Jaron put. So shout out to them. And last one I got on here, we'll would, would talk about a little music on this one, is uh, one of the best, one of the greatest songwriters ever, Grace Nashville, Dallas Frazier, passed away a few weeks ago. And if anybody doesn't know that name, uh, I mean, just look at his catalog of songs. He 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 wrote. I mean, Elvira being one that just stands out for the Oak Ridge Boys. I mean, he yeah. wrote. 
I mean, you name it, Tanya Tucker, a couple a of number big of hits. them, yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, anybody can think of. So uh, that was a that was you know he he was on up there in the years, but uh, Oklahoma guy moved to Nashville. I mean, I was reading some stories over the past couple of weeks of just different people that. I mean, Charlie Pride was one. I think uh, if it was it was him and um, the the other guy, Cowboy, the the producer there that kind of he said he said I'm gonna get you here. Dallas is gonna get you some songs and you know things like that and. It was real inspirational. Some young people when they first came to town and gave them a song when no one else would give them a song and that kind of stuff. So, uh, I want to put out there another songwriter, country legend, gone yeah, for but not sure. forgotten. And and um, and thoughts and prayers to to his family as well. And I don't know that we mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Betty White. Yep. And what what was crazy about this was People Magazine had released a cover of Betty White that was to come out in a week or two, you know, following her death. They didn't obviously know she was going to pass. She passed away at 99, and and it said something about, you know, making it to 100 years old or something. Because she died on her birthday, I think. Well, she died at 99, I know. So I don't think she made it to 100. Oh, yeah, maybe not. They had put on the cover that she had. So – if I get to that point, ninety nine, I'm too. I ain't. I ain't doing anything about making yeah. it to a hundred. It's like, so. yeah, they haven't missed a free throw all season. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah, save right. that for sure. Yeah, Betty White. I thought. I think. I don't. I'm not sure. Just be honest. We we may not if we hadn't. I mean, good gracious, Betty White. Who doesn't love the Golden Girls? And she everything she was ever on, she was just funny. I mean, she was just good. She reminded me of my grandmother Anno. Uh, kind of the way they look and stuff, but and just sweet like that, but funny and snappy. But, okay, uh, so she was born on uh, January 17th, and she died on uh, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, okay. So she was a couple of weeks away from turning 100. Yeah. Just saying. Yep, bummer. Hope that, hope, it, hope that train slows down, and um, we don't have to have to do many of those this season. But thought we'd I get those so. in there, just let everybody know we were thinking about them and stuff. Um as we have to do here from time to time. So that's just part of it. For uh, sure. But, uh, yeah, but I, I want to say, uh, too, you know, I was talking to Cody earlier, and we've got all kinds of cool stuff coming up for the podcast and the tour and things like that. And I know we talked about it on the top of the show, but I want to say again, make sure everybody go to justinmoremusic.com and check out the tour schedule for all the shows we've released so far. Uh, we're going to do a cool tour with Granger and a couple other buddies um, – uh, in this year, I know the first show is in Pensacola, Florida in April that we're doing this particular tour. Uh, so y'all make sure to get out there if you hadn't already and get your tickets. I know a lot of the cities are selling really well. So, uh, get good seats now while they last. Um, and I know Justin mentioned, we're going to have Granger on at some point. We've got a couple other guests we've talked to over the last few weeks that want to get on. We're just kind of, we're just kind of slow rolling this thing. Just like we're going to do the tour this year. We're going to slow roll it. We're going to ramp up. We're going to be rocking like we do every year. And uh, it's going to be a fun ride here on season four of the Justin Moore podcast. I um, actually talked to another buddy of ours earlier today. was going to try to get him on as a secret <laughs> guest, but it didn't work out. But uh, I'm going to surprise you with him here on one of these episodes soon. He'll be fun and easy. All right. Uh, but uh, until then, unless you got anything else you want to hit on, Just, I guess we need to uh, let everybody know to remember to use the hashtag Justin Moore podcast. Remember to uh, like, rate, subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts. And like we mentioned earlier, anywhere you can possibly download a podcast, the Justin Moore podcast is on there now, along with the Morning Mayhem show. So y'all make sure to get both of those. And like I said, go ahead and just download them now. Uh, you can swipe and it'll say download. That way you've got them on your phone. It's not going to clog up too much memory. Yeah, it sends audio it to files. you. Yeah, it sends it to you. And then you have it. So if you don't have service or, you know, the internet drops out, you'll have some stuff to listen to. I do that with all kinds of stuff. You're I flying and you go, yeah. oh, man, I can't get reception. Oh, well, I can listen to this podcast. Yeah, you're in the doctor's office, DMV, whatever. You just have something to listen to. So, yeah, y'all make sure to go listen to those. Like I said, those like, rate, subscribe, hit the notification button, leave a, uh, a five-star review and leave a little short message on there. That would be great. Uh, tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. Uh, use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast when you're interacting on social media. JR the Handler, Justin Cole Moore. I had a good time this week, Just. We're gonna have to, it's it's gonna fun, be a good man. year, and, and uh, yeah, I look forward to talking about more shows as they come up, and then uh, we're gonna do a couple of these like we did last year from the road. So that that's gonna be fun too. So for sure, and uh, you and I will see each other uh, as this podcast comes out. We will 
see each other in just over a week at SeaWorld in um, Orlando area. Yes, February so, 5th. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing your godchild, Southman. Um, T-South, the we'll, T-Rex. Yeah, so uh, that'll be fun. Yeah, I talked to the um, hospitality lady there uh, yesterday, the day before Jeff were on a conference call, gave him the heads up, told him all that we wanted to – he wanted to – Meet the Dolphins, so we'll see how all that works. Should be fun. I know Ellen Ken did years ago. I know they had a had a real good time. So I remember last time we were there, they have a couple big roller coasters there um, that I'm looking forward to Mike getting on again. They do. So so y'all check that out. Like I said, go to justinmoremusic.com. You can get all the tour dates, all the links to the podcast, all that fun stuff. We appreciate y'all tuning in, tuning out with us today. We'll be back here next week on the Justin Moore Podcast. Y'all tune back in. We'll see y'all then. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 35, As If There's No Tomorrow. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A day is a unique thing. It's a 24-hour segment of time that will never be repeated. A period of time when things will happen that will never happen again. A day when human beings will be born and die. And when relationships will be formed or shattered. The date will never appear again. I have had friends who were sick and I knew they were getting close to the end. I put off going to see them until it was too late. I've missed timely opportunities, failed to meet deadlines, blown appointments, and had a thousand other shortcomings for the simple reason that I forgot about the importance of today. There will be opportunities today that may never come again. I remember a night a few years ago when we were traveling across the northern part of the country in our bus. My wife and I had gone to bed and our driver rang the intercom to tell us the northern lights were visible. Of course, we got up, went to the front of the bus, and enjoyed the spectacle, which could have very well been a once in a lifetime opportunity. If you look around every day is special in some way, there is no day like today. It will never return, rewind, or replay. It comes once with all its unique opportunities and one of a kind attributes. Any today could be the last one we'll ever see. Life has no dress rehearsal. When the curtain goes up, it's always the main event. Let's all make the day count.